I played with me, yeah. It is, yeah, definitely. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hi there. Welcome to Green Stage's 34th season of Free Shakespeare in the Park. We are so happy you're here. Um, a couple of housekeeping things before we get started. First of all, restrooms are located kind of around there, around the baseball fields, a little bit of a walk, so just be mindful of your neighbors if you have to get up in the middle of the show. There is no intermission, so also be aware of that. Um, want to thank our season sponsors for Culture and the Seattle Parks Department. We have also, I also want to thank our um, support of our season, oh, our generous donations of previous audiences and donors. So a huge thank you, you to last year's audiences. If any of you guys were here last year, a couple of you, um, we wouldn't be here without you. Um, so thank you so much. We do have fabulous swag available for a donation, if you'd like, at our house manager's table over there. We have some really neat t-shirts. We've got mugs. We have some nice ground covers that say Green Stage on them, and they're really nice souvenirs of your time. Also some little pins. Um, you can also uh, donate if you'd like in the future. We do take credit cards, um, we do cash. Um, you can do that over there at the house manager's table as well. Um, we also, what else can I tell you? Obviously, I've not memorized this whole thing. Um, you'll find our full summer season schedule on our website, and also if you don't already have a program, your summer schedule's also in there. And um, please come see our sister shows if you haven't already, Henry V, which is a full-length Shakespeare, and our Backyard Bard series, which is an abridged version of Much Ado About Nothing and Macbeth, and they're both really great. And they are happening, today is the last show of the weekend, but next week is our last weekend of shows. So please try and catch um, both of those if you can. Um, turn down your cell phones. That was another thing I need to tell you guys about. And finally... Um, we wish to acknowledge that the land on which we gather is the ancestral, unceded territory of the Duwamish, Muckleshoot, and other Coast Salish nations, past, present, and future. They are this land's original storytellers. Um, so check our website for places to start learning more about local tribal and native-driven initiatives in your communities. And with that, thank you, West Seattle, for being here. Enjoy Pericles, Prince of Tyre. Ancient Gower is come. <laughs> Assuming man's infirmities to glad your ears and please your eyes. It has been sung at festivals, on ember eaves and holy ales, and lords and ladies in their lives have read it for restoratives. If you, born in these latter times when wits more ripe, accept my rhymes, and if to hear an old one sing may to your wishes pleasures bring, I life would wish, and that I might waste it for you, like taper light. This Antioch then, Antiochus the Great, built up this city for his chiefest seat. The king unto him took a fair. Oh. <laughs> Who died and left a female heir? So buxom, blithe, and full of face, as heaven had lent her all his grace, with whom the father liking took, and her to incest did provoke. Bad child, worse father, to incite his own to evil should be done by none. The beauty of this sinful dame made many princes thither frame to seek her as their bedfellow in marriage, pleasure's playfellow. Which to prevent, he made a law to keep her still and men at all that whoso sought her for his wife, his riddle told not, lost his life. So for her, many a white did die as yon grim looks do testify. 
What now ensues to the judgment of your eye, I give our cause, who best can justify. Young Prince of Tyre, you have at large received the danger of the task you undertake. I have, Antiochus, and with the soul emboldened with the glory of her praise, think death no hazard in this enterprise. Bring forth our daughter, clothed like a bride for the embracements even of Jove himself. See where she comes, apparelled like the spring graces her subjects, and her thoughts the king of every virtue gives renown to men. O oh, you gods that made me man and sway in love, that have inflamed desire in my breast to taste the fruit of yon celestial tree or die in the adventure, be my helps, as I am son and servant to your will, to compass such a boundless happiness. Prince Pericles. Oh, that would be son to great Antiochus. Before thee stands this fair Hesperides, with golden fruit but dangerous to be touched, for death-like dragons here affright thee hard. Yon sometimes famous princes, like thyself, drawn by report, adventurous by desire, tell thee with speechless tongues and semblance pale that without covering, save yon field of stars, here they stand, martyrs, slain in Cupid's wars. Antiochus, I thank thee, who hath taught my frail mortality to know itself, and by those fearful objects to repair this body like to them to what I must. So I bequeath a happy peace to you and to all good men, as every prince should, my riches to the earth from whence they came, but my unspotted fire of love to you. Thus ready for the way of life or death, I wait the sharpest blow, Antiochus. Scorning advice, read the conclusion then, which being read and not expounded, tis decreed, like these before thee, thou thyself shalt bleed. Of all said yet, mayest thou prove prosperous. Of all said yet, I wish thee happiness. Like a bold champion, I assume the list, nor ask advice of any other thoughts but hopefulness and courage. I am no viper, yet I feed on mother's flesh, which did me breed. I sought a husband, in which labor I found that kindness in a father. He's father, son, and husband mild, my mother, wife, and yet his child. How they may be, and yet in two, as you will live, resolve it you. Sharp physic is the last. But, oh, you powers that give heaven countless eyes to view men's acts, why cloud they not their sights perpetually, if this be true, which makes me pale to read it? Fair glass of light, I loved you and could still, were not this glorious casket stored with ill. And I must tell you now, my thoughts revolt, for he's no man on whom perfections wait, that knowing sin within will touch the gate. You are a fair vial, and your sense the strings, who when played to make man his lawful music, would draw heaven down and all the gods to hearken. But being played upon before your time, hell only dances at so harsh a chime. Oh, good sooth, I care not for you. Prince Pericles, your time's expired. Either expound now or receive your sentence. Great king, if you love to hear the sins they love to act, it would braid yourself too near for me to tell it. Who has a book? Of all that monarchs do, he's more secure to keep it shut than show. Kings are Earth's gods in vice, their laws, their will, and if Jove stray, who dare say Jove doth ill? It is enough, you know, and it is fit, which being more known grows worse to smother it. All love the womb, their first being bred, then give my tongue like leave to love my head. Heaven that I had thy head, he has found the meaning, but I will glows with him. Young Prince of Tyre, though by the tenor of our strict edict, your exposition misunderstanding, we might proceed to cancel of your days, yet Hope succeeding from so fair a tree as your fair self doth tune us otherwise. Four days longer we do respite you. If by this time our secret be undone, this mercy shows we'll joy in such a son. And until then, your entertain shall be as doth befit our honor and your worth. How courtesy would seem to cover sin when what is done to me is like a hypocrite, the which is good at nothing but in sight. If it be true that I interpret false, and were uncertain you were not so bad as with foul incest to abuse your soul. Antioch, farewell, for wisdom shows those who blush not, and actions blacker than the night will shun no course to keep them from the light. But lest my life be cropped to keep you clear by flight, I'll shun the danger which I fear. He has found the meaning for the which we mean to have his head. He must not live to trumpet forth my infamy, nor tell the world Antiochus to sin in such a loathed manner, and therefore instantly 
This prince must die, for by his fall my honor must keep high. Who attends us there? Doth your highness call? Mm. Thaliard, behold, here's poison and here's gold. We hate the prince of Tyre, and thou must kill him. It befits thee not to ask the reason why. Because we bid it. Say, is it done? My lord, tis done. Enough. My lord! Prince Pericles is fled. As thou wilt live, fly after, and like an arrow shot from an experienced archer doth hit the mark his eye doth level at, so thou never return unless thou say Prince Pericles is dead. My lord, if I can get him within my pistol's length, I'll make him sure enough. So, farewell to your highness. Thaliad, adieu. Till Pericles be dead, my heart can lend no sucker to my head. Why should this change of thoughts, that the sad companion, dull-eyed melancholy, be my so used a guest? Is that an hour in the day's glorious walk or peaceful night, the tomb where grief should sleep can breed me quiet? Here, pleasures court mine eyes, and my eyes shun them. And danger which I feared is at Antioch, whose aim seems far too short to hit me here. But neither pleasure's arts can join my spirits, nor the other's distance comfort me. Then it is thus. The great Antiochus, can to mind too little to contend, for he so great can make his will his act, will think me speaking, though I swear to silence. Nor boots it me to say I honor him. If you suspect I may dishonor him, and what may make him blush in being known, he'll stop the course by which it might be known. With hostile forces he'd overspread the land, and with the ostent of war would look so huge, amazement shall drive courage from the state. Our men be vanquished, ere they do resist, and subjects punished that ne'er thought offense. Which care of them, not pity of myself, makes my body pine and soul to languish. Joy and all comfort in your sacred breast! And keep your mind peaceful and comfortable. Peace, peace, and give experienced tongue. They do abuse the king that flatter him. When Signor Sue here does proclaim a peace, he flatters you, makes war upon your life. Prince, pardon me or strike me if you please. I cannot be much lower than my knees. <laughs> I'll leave us else. But let your cares o'erlook what shippings and what ladings in our harbor, and then return to us. Helicanus, what seest thou in our looks? An angry brow, dread lord. Such a dart be in prince's frowns, how durst thy tongue move anger to our face? How dare the plants look up to heaven from whence they have their nourishment? Thou knowest I have power to take thy life from thee? I have ground the axe myself. Do but you strike the blow. Arise, prithee, rise. Thou art no flatterer, I thank thee for it. God forbid the king shall let their ears hear their faults hid. A fit counselor and servants to a prince, by whose wisdom thy makest a prince thy servant. What wouldst thou have me do? To bear with patience such griefs as you yourself do lay upon yourself. Thou speakest like a physician, Helicanus, that administerest a potion unto me that thou wouldst tremble to receive thyself. I went to Antioch, where, as thou knowest, in the face of danger, I sought the purchase of a glorious beauty, whose face was to mine eye beyond all wonder the rest, hark in thine ear, as black as incense, <gasps> which by my knowledge found, the sinful king seemed not to strike, but smooth. But thou knowest this, it's time to fear when tyrants seem to kiss. Such fear so grew in me, I hither fled under the cover of a careful night, and should he doubt, as no doubt he does, that I should open to the listening air how many worthy prince's bloods were shed to keep his bed of blackness unlaid ope, to lop that doubt he'd fill this land with arms and make a pretense of wrong I have done him, which by my, if I may call it, offense, must feel war's blow and spare not innocence. Alas, sir. And drew sleep from mine eyes, blood from my cheeks, and musings into my mind with thousand doubts how I might stop this tempest ere it came. And finding little comfort to relieve them, I thought it princely charity to grieve them. Well, my lord, since you have given me leave to speak, freely will I speak. Antiochus you fear, and justly, too. I, I think you fear the tyrant who, either by public war or private treason, will take away your life. Therefore, my lord, go travel 
for a while, till that his rage and anger be forgot, or till the destinies do cut his thread of life. Your rule direct to any, if to me, they serves not light more faithful than I'll be. I do not doubt thy faith, but should he wrong my liberties in my absence? We'll mingle our bloods together in the earth from whence we had our being and our birth. Tyre, I now look from thee then, and to Tarsus intend my travel, where I'll hear from you, and by whose letters I'll dispose myself. The care I had and have of subjects good on thee I lay, whose wisdom strength can bear it. Oh, I'll take thy word on faith, not ask thine oath. Who shuns not to break one will sure crack both. <laughs> So, this is Tyre, <laughs> and this the court. Here must I kill King Pericles, and if I do it not, I'm sure to be hanged at home. Tis dangerous. Well, I perceive he was a wise fellow and had good sense, that being bid to ask what he would of the king, desired he might know none of the king's secrets. Now do I see he had some reason for it. For if a king but a man be a villain, he's bound by the indenture of his oath to be one. Hush! Here come the lords of Tyre. You shall not need, my fellow peers of Tyre, further to question me of your king's departure. His sealed commission, left in trust with me, doth speak sufficiently. He's gone to travel. How? The king gone? If further yet you will be satisfied why he would depart, I'll give some light to you. Being at Antioch. What from Antioch? Royal Antiochus, on what cause I know not, took some displeasure at him. At least he judged so, and doubting lest he had erred or sinned, to show his sorrow he'd correct himself. And so puts himself unto the shipman's toil, with whom each minute threatens life or death. <gasps> well, I perceive I shall not be hanged now. But now he's gone, the king's seas must please. He scaped the land to perish by the seas. <laughs> I'll present myself. <clears throat> Peace to the lords of Tyre. Lord Thaliard from Antiochus is welcome. <laughs> from him I come with message unto princely Pericles. But since my landing I have understood your king has betook himself to unknown travels. My message must return from whence it came. We have no reason to desire it. Commend it to our master, not to us. Yet, ere you shall depart, this we desire. As friends to Antioch, we may feast in Tyre. <laughs> My Dionysa, shall we rest us here? And by relating tales of others' griefs, See if twill teach us to forget our own. Oh, that were to blow at fire and hope to quench it. For who digs hills because they do aspire? Throws down one mountain to cast up a higher. Oh, my distress, Lord, and such our griefs are. Oh, Dionysa, who wanteth food and will not say he wants it, or can conceal his hunger till he famish? This Tarsus, o'er which I hold the government, whose towers bore heads so high they kissed the clouds, and strangers ne'er beheld but wondered at, whose men and dames so jetted and adorned like one another's glass to trim them by. Their tables were stored full to glad the sight, and not so much to feed on as delight. All poverty was scorned, and pride so great the name of health grew odious to repeat. Oh, tis too true. Oh, but see what heaven can do. By this are changed, these mouths, who but of late earth see and air, are all too little to content and please, are all now starved for want of exercise. Those palates, who but two years younger would have inventions to delight the taste, would now be glad of bread and beg for it. How sharp are hunger's teeth that man and wife draw lots, who first shall die to lengthen life. There stands a lord, and there a lady weeping. Here many sink, yet those which see them fall have scarce strength left to give them burial. Is not this true? Our cheeks and hollow eyes do witness it. Lord Governor, we have descried upon our neighboring shore a portly sail of ships make hitherward. I thought as much. One sorrow never comes but brings an heir that will serve as his inheritor, and so with ours. Some neighboring nation, taking advantage of our misery, has stuffed these hollow vessels with their power to beat us down, the which are down already and make a conquest of unhappy me. That's the least fear. 
For by the semblance of their white flags displayed, they bring us peace and come to us as favorers, not as foes. Thou speak'st like hymns untutored to repeat. Who makes the fairest show means most deceit. But bring them what they can and what they will. What have we to fear? The ground's the lowest and we are halfway there. <laughs> Go and tell their general we attend him here to know for what he comes and whence he comes and what he craves. I go, my lord. Welcome his peace if he on peace consist. If wars we are unable to resist. Lord Governor, for so we hear you are, let not our ships and number of our men be like a beacon fired to amaze your eyes. We have heard your miseries as far as Tyre and seen the desolation of your streets. Nor come we to add sorrow to your tears, but to relieve them of their heavy load. And these are ships you happily may think were like the Trojan horse was stuffed within with bloody veins, expecting overthrow, are stored with corn to make your needy bread and give them life whom hunger starved half dead. Oh, the gods of Greece protect you and will pray for you. Rise, I pray you, rise. We do not look to reverence, but to love and harbor it for ourselves, our ships, and men. The which, when any shall not gratify or pay you with unthankfulness in thought, be it our wives, our children, or ourselves, the curse of heaven and men exceed their evils. Till when, the which I hope shall ne'er be seen, your grace is welcome to our town and us. Which welcome will accept. Feast here a while, till our stars that frown lend us a smile. Here have you seen a mighty king, his child I wish to incest bring. A better prince, and most benign lord, that will prove awful, both in deed and word. The good, in conversation, to whom I give my benison, is still in Tarsus, where each man thinks all is writ he speck and can. And to remember what he does, build his statue to make him glorious. Good Helicane, that stayed at home not to eat honey like a drone from others' labors, for though he strive to kill it bad, keep good alive, and to fulfill his prince's desire, sends word of all that haps entire. How Thalyard came, full bent with sin, and had intent to murder him, and that in Tarsus was not best for him to longer take his rest. He, doing so, put forth to sea, where when men bend their seldom ease, for now the winds begin to blow, thunder above! And deeps below, make such unquiet that the ship should house him safe, is wrecked and split. And he, good prince, having all lost by waves from coast to coast, is tossed, all perishing of men, of pelf, nay, aught escape it but himself. Till fortune, tired with doing bad, threw him ashore to give him glad. Yet seize your ire, you angry stars of heaven. Wind, rain, and thunder. Remember, earthly man is but a substance that must yield to you, and I, as fits my nature, do obey you. Alas, the sea hath cast me on the rocks, washed me from shore to shore, and left me breath nothing to think on but ensuing death. Let it suffice the greatness of your powers to have bereft a prince of all his fortunes and having thrown him from your watery grave here to have death in peace is all he'll crave. What ho, built, ha! Help and bring away the eggs! What patch breach, I say! What say you, master? Oh, look how thou stirrest now. Faith, master, I am thinking of the poor men that were cast away before us even now. Alas, Poor souls, it grieved my heart to hear what pitiful cries they made to us to help them when, well, a day we could scarce help ourselves. Please, master, said I not as much when we saw the porpoise, how he bounced and tumbled. They say they're half fish, half flesh. Or oh, plague on them, they dare come, but I look to be washed. Master, I marvel how the fishies live in the sea. <laughs> Why, as men do a land, the great ones eat up the little ones. Why, I can compare our rich misers to nothing so fitly as to a whale, a blaze and tumble, driving the poor <laughs> fry before him, and at last devours them all at a mouthful. Such whales have I heard of, or land, who never leave gaping till they've swallowed the whole parish, church, steeple, bells, and all. A pretty moral. But if the good King Simonides were of mine, Simonides. we would purge the land of these drones and rob the bee of her honey. 
how from the finny subject of the sea these fishers tell the infirmities of men, and how from their watery empire recollect all that men may approve or men detect. Peace be at your labor, <laughs> honest fisherman. Honest? Good fellow, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> May see, the sea hath cast upon your coast a man Oh, whom... what a drunken knave was the sea to cast thee in our way! <laughs> a man whom both the waters and the wind in that vast tennis court hath made the ball for them to play upon and treat you to pity him. He asks of you that never used to beg. No, friends, cannot you beg? There's them in our country of Greece gets more with begging than we can do with working. <laughs> Canst thou catch any fishes, oh. then? Oh. I never practiced it. <laughs> Nay, then thou wilt starve, sure, for there's nothing to be caught here nowadays unless thou canst fish for it. <laughs> what I have been, I have forgot to know, but what I am, want, teaches me to think on. A man thronged up with cold, my veins are chill and have no more of life than may suffice to give my tongue that heat to ask your help, which if you shall refuse, when I am dead, for that I am a man, pray, see me buried. Die, quota. Now gods forbid. Come, I have a gown here. Put it on. Keep thee oh. warm. Eh, now a furry, a handsome fellow. Come, thou shalt go home, and we'll have flesh for holidays, fish for fasting days, and moral puddings and flapjacks, and thou shalt be welcome. I thank you, sir. Hark you, friend, you said you could not beg. I did but crave. But crave? Then I'll turn a crave or two, and so I shall escape whipping. Why? Are all your beggars whipped, then? Not all, my friends, not all. For if all your beggars were whipped, then I would wish no better office than to be beetle. <laughs> uh, I'll bring away the nets. <laughs> uh, well, this honest merc becomes their labor. Uh, he, sir, do you know where you are? Not well. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll tell you. This here is called Pentapolis, and our king... The good Simonides. The good King Simonides, do you call him? Aye, sir, and he deserves to be called so for his peaceable reign and good government. He is a happy king, since he gains from his subjects his name of good by his government. How far is his court distant from the shore? Oh, married, sir, half a day's journey. And I'll tell you, he hath a fair daughter, and tomorrow is her birthday, and there are princes and knights come from all parts of the world to joust and tourney for her love. <laughs> Were my fortunes equal to my desires, I could wish to make one there. Oh, sir, things must be as they may. Help, master, help! Here's a fish hangs in the net like a poor man's right in the law. T'will hardly come out. Ha! Bats on it! Tis come at last, and tis charmed into a rusty armor. <laughs> and armor, friends, I pray you let me see it. Oh, oh, thanks, fortune, yet that after all my crosses thou hast given me somewhat to repair myself. And though it were mine own, parts of my heritage which my dead father did bequeath to me even as he left his life with this strict charge. Keep it, my Pericles, it hath been a shield twixt me and death, and pointed to this brace. And that it saved me, keep it. And like necessity, the which the gods protect thee from, may it defend thee. Oh, it kept where I kept, I so dearly loved it, till the rough seas who spare not any man took it in rage. So... Calmed, have given it again. I thank thee for it. My shipwreck now is no ill, since I have here my father's gift and will. What mean you, sir? Oh, to beg of you, kind sirs, this coach of worth, for it was sometimes target to a king. Um, I, I know it by this mark. He loved me dearly, and for his sake I wish the having of it, and that you'd guide me to your sovereign's court, where with it I may appear a gentleman. <laughs> and if ever my low fortune's better, I'll pay your bounties. Till then, rest your debtor. Why, wilt thou tourney for the lady? I'll show the virtue I have borne in arms. Why, do you take it then, and the gods give thee good on it? Hark you, friend! Twas we that made up this garment through the rough seams of the waters. There are certain condolments, certain veils. I hope, sir, if you thrive, you'll remember from whence you had it. By, believe you, I will. And, and by your fatherance, I am clothed in steel. <laughs> Now, spite all the raptures of the sea, this jewel holds his building on my arm. Now, honor be but a goal to my will. This day I'll rise, or else add ill to ill. Oh, 
knights ready to begin the triumph. They are, my liege, and <laughs> they are coming to present themselves. Return them. We are ready. And our daughter, in honor of whose birth these triumphs are, sits here like beauty's child, whom nature gat for men to see, and seeing wonder at. <laughs> it pleaseth you, my royal father, to express my combinations great whose merits left. It's fit it should be so. <laughs> for princes are a model which heaven makes like to itself. As jewels lose their glories if neglected, so princes their renowns if not respected. <laughs> it is now your honor, daughter, to explain the labor of each knight in his device. Which to preserve mine honor, I'll perform. <laughs> the first that doth prefer himself? A prince of Macedon, my royal father. Ah. And the device he bears upon his shield is an armed knight that's conquered by a lady. <laughs> the model thus in Spanish, pia por lo zona que por fuerza. Ah, more by lenity than by force. <laughs> Shing, swoosh, swoosh, swoosh. <laughs> Who is the second that presents himself? A knight of Antioch. Ah. And his device, a wreath of chivalry. The word, me pompai provexit apex. Ah. The honor of the contest, let me on. What's the third? A burning torch that's turned upside down. The motto, quad me alip, makes tingui. Ah, who feeds me, extinguishes me, which shows that beauty hath his power and will, which can as well inflame as it can kill. <laughs> And what's the fourth and last? He seems to be a stranger, but his present is a withered branch that's only green at top. The motto, Inox Baby Bull. Ah, in this hope, I live. <laughs> a pretty moral. <laughs> From the dejected state wherein he is, he hopes by you his fortunes yet may flourish. He had need mean better than his outward show. Can any way speak in his just commend? For by his rusty outsides, he appears to have practiced more the whipstock than the lines. He may well be a stranger, for he comes to an honored triumph strangely furnished. And on some purpose, let his armor to rust until this day to scour it in the dust. Opinion's <laughs> but a fool, but makes us scan the outward habit by the inward man. Hm. But stay! The knights are coming! We will withdraw into the gallery! Oh, 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 oh,
knights, 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 knights. To place upon the volume of your deeds as in a title page, your worth in arms were more than you expect or more than fit, since every worth in show commends itself. Prepare for mirth! <laughs> the mirth becomes a feast. You are princes and my guests. <laughs> you, my knight and guest, to whom this wreath of victory I give and crown you king of this day's happiness. Tis more by fortune, lady, than by merit. Now call it by what you will. The day is yours. And here, I hope, is none that envies it. In framing an artist, art hath thus decreed to make some good, but others to exceed. And you are her labored scholar. <laughs> oh, come, queen of the feast, for daughter, so you are. Here, take your place. Marshal the rest as they deserve their grace. We are honored much by good Simonides. <laughs> your presence glads our days. Honor we love. For who hates honor hates the gods above. <laughs> oh, sir, yonder is your place. Uh, some other is more fit, my lord. Oh, contend not, sir, for we are gentlemen, and neither in our hearts nor outward eyes envy the great, nor do the low despise. <laughs> you are right, courteous knights. <sighs> my Juno, that is queen of marriage, all viands that I eat do seem unsavory, wishing him my meat. Sure, he's a gallant gentleman. Oh, he's but a country gentleman. Has done no more than other knights have done. Has broken a star for two. Let it pass. To me, he seems like diamond to gloves. Yon king's to me like to my father's picture, which tells me in that glory once he was, had princes sit like stars about his throne and need the sun for them to reverence. None that beheld him but like lesser lights to veil their crowns to his supremacy. Where now his son is like a glowworm in the night, the which hath fire and darkness, none in light. What? Are you merry knights? Who I'm could be other in his royal presence? <laughs> here, here, with a cup that's stored unto the brim, as you do love, fill to your mistress' lips. We drink this health to you. We, we thank, thank your grace. grace. <laughs> Yet pause a while. Your knight doth sit too melancholy, as if the entertainment of our court had not a show to come to veil his work. Noted not you, Thasia? What is it to me, my father? Oh, attend, my daughter. Princes in this should live like gods above, that freely give to everyone that come to honor them. And princes not doing so are like to gnats, which make a sound, but killed are wondered at. Therefore, to make his entrance more sweet, here, Say we drink this standing bowl of wine to him. Alas, my father, it befits not me into a stranger knife to be so bold. How? Do as I bid you, or you'll move me else. <laughs> <laughs> now with the gods, he cannot please me better. Mm -hmm. And furthermore, tell him we desire to know of him, of whence he is his name and parentage. The king, my father, sir, has drunk to you. I, I thank him. Wishing it more blood unto your life. I thank him, and you, and pledge him freely. And further, he desires to know of you, of whence you are, your name, and parentage. A gentleman of Tyre, my name Pericles. My education's been in arts and arms, who seeking adventures in the world was by the rough seas reft of ships and men, and after shipwreck driven upon the shore, He thanks your grace, <laughs> names himself Pericles, a gentleman of Tyre, who only by the misfortune of the seas were wrecked of ships and men, cast on the shore. Oh, now by the gods do I pity his misfortune, and will wake him from his melancholy. <laughs> <laughs> Come, gentlemen, we sit too long on trifles and waste the time, which looks for other revels. Even in your armors, as you are addressed, will very well become a soldier's die! Hey! <laughs> Come, sir. Here is a lady that wants breathing, too. 
And I hear you knights of Tyre are excellent at making ladies trip, and that their measures are as excellent. In, in those that practice them, they are, my lord. Oh, sir, that's as much as would be denied of your fair courtesy. <laughs> But you, the best. <laughs> A pages and lights to conduct these knights unto their several lodgings. Yours, sir, we have given order to be next to our own. I am at your grace's pleasure. <laughs> it is too late to talk of love. And that's the mark I know they level at. Therefore, each one betake him to his rest. Tomorrow, or for speeding, do their best. <laughs> <laughs> No, Eschines, know this of me. Antiochus from incest lived not free, for which the most high gods, not minding longer to withhold the vengeance that they had in store due to this heinous capital offense, even in the height and pride of all his glory, when he was seated in a chariot of an inestimable value, and his daughter with him, a fire from heaven came and shriveled up their bodies, even to loathing, it was very strange. And yet but justice, for though this king were great, mm. his greatness was no guard to bar heaven's shaft, but sin had his reward. Tis very true. Yes. See, not a man in private conference or council has respect with him, but he it shall no longer grieve without reproof. Follow me then. <laughs> Lord Helicane, a word with me, <clears throat> and welcome. Happy day, my lords. Know that our griefs are risen to the top, and now at last they overflow their banks. Your griefs? For what? Wrong not your prince you love. Wrong not yourself, then, noble Helicane. But if the king do live, let us salute him, or know what grounds made happy by his breath. If in the world he live, we'll seek him out. If in his grave he rests, we'll find him there and know he lives to govern us. Or dead gives cause to mourn his funeral and leave us to our free election. Oh, Whose death, indeed, is the strongest in our censure. And knowing this kingdom is without a head, like goodly buildings without a roof, soon fall to ruin. Your noble self, that best know how to rule and how to reign, we thus submit unto our sovereign. Live noble Helicane! Live noble Helicane! Live noble Helicane! For honor's cause, forbear your suffrages! If that you love, Prince Pericles, forbear! A twelfth month longer I entreat you to forbear the absence of your king. If in which time expired he not return, I shall with aged patience bear your yoke but if i cannot win you to this love go search like nobles like noble subjects and in your search spend your adventures worth whom if you find and win unto return you shall like diamonds sit about his crown to wisdom he's a fool that will not yield and since lord helicane enjoineth us we with our travels will endeavor us then you love us we you and will clasp hands when peers thus knit a kingdom ever stands <coughs> good morrow to the good simonides oh, knights from my daughter this I let you know, that for this twelve months she'll not undertake a married life. Her reason to herself is only known, which yet from her by no means can I get. But may we not have access to her, my lord? Faith, by no means. <laughs> She's so strictly tied her to a chamber that tis impossible. Lo, to bid farewell, 
we take our leaves. <laughs> so, they are well dispatched. <laughs> now to my daughter's letter. Uh -oh. She tells me here she'd wed the stranger knight, who never more to view nor day nor light. Oh, tis well, mistress, your choice agrees with mine. I like that well. <laughs> Nay, but how absolute she's in't, not minding whether I dislike or no. Well, I do commend her choice and will no longer have it be delayed. Soft, here he comes. I must dissemble it. <laughs> All fortune to the good Simonides. Oh, you as well, sir. Let me ask you one thing. What do you think of our daughter, sir? A most virtuous princess. She is fair too, is she not? As a fair day in summer, wondrous fair. Uh, sir, my daughter thinks very well of you. Aye, so well that you must be her master and she will be your scholar. Therefore, look to it. Uh, I am unworthy for her schoolmaster. <laughs> She thinks not so. Peruse this writing else. Oh. What's this? A letter that she loves the Knight of Tyre. <laughs> <laughs> Tis the king's subtlety to have my life. Oh, seek not to entrap me, gracious lord. A stranger and distress a gentleman who never aimed so high to love your daughter, but bent all offices to honor her. Thou hast bewitched my daughter, and thou art a villain. By the gods, I have not. Never did thought of mine love you offense, or never did my actions yet commence any deed by gain her love or your displeasure. Traitor, thou liest. Traitor. Aye, traitor. Even in his throat, unless it be the king that calls me traitor, I return the lie. Now, by the gods, I do applaud his courage. <laughs> My actions are as noble as my thoughts, which never relished of a base descent. I came unto your court for honor's cause, and not to be a rebel to her state. <laughs> and he that otherwise accounts of me, my sword, shall prove his honor's enemy. No! Oh, here comes my daughter! She can witness it! Then, as you are as virtuous as fair, resolve thy angry father, if my tongue did e'er solicit, or my hand subscribe to any syllable that made love to you. Why, sir, say if you had! Who takes offense that would make me glad? Yay, mistress, are you so peremptory? I'm glad I know with all my heart. I'll tame you. I'll bring you in subjection. Will you, not having my consent, bestow your love and your affections upon a stranger who, for aught all I know, may be, nor can I think to the contrary, as great in blood as myself? <laughs> Therefore, hear you, mistress. Either frame your will to mine, and you, sir, hear you. Either be ruled by me, or I will make you man and wife! <laughs> nay, nay, come, your hands and lips must seal it so, and being joined, all thus your hopes destroy. And, for further grief, God give you joy. What? Are you both pleased? Yes, if you love me, sir. Even as my life or blood that fosters it. And what, are you both agreed? Yes, yes. if, if it, it please, please your majesty. majesty. <laughs> it pleaseth me so well that I will see you wed. And then with what haste you can get you to bed. <laughs> <laughs> Now sleepy slaked hath the rout, no din but snores the house about, made louder by the o'erfed breast of this most pompous marriage feast. Hymen hath brought the bride to bed, where by the loss of maidenhead a babe is molded. By many a dern and painful perch of Pericles, the careful search is made with all due diligence, that horse and sail and high expense can stead the quest. At last from Tyre, fame answering the most strange inquire, to the court of King Simonides are letters brought to ten of these. Antiochus and his daughter, dead. The men of Tyre on the head of Helicane would set on the crown, but he will none. The mutiny he there haste to oppress says to him, if King 
Pericles come not home in twice six moons, he, obedient to their dooms, will take the crown. The sum of this brought hither to Pentapolis, he ravished the regions round, and everyone with claps can sound, our heir apparent is a king! Huzzah! Who dreamed? Who thought of such a thing? Brief, he must hence depart to Tyre. His queen with child makes her desire, which who shall cross, along to go. Omit we all their dole and woe. Like Corrida, her nurse, she takes, and so to sea. The vessel shakes on Neptune's billow. Hath the flood, hath their keel cut. But fortune's mood varies again. The grisly north disgorges such a tempest forth that as a duck for life that dives so up and down, the poor ship drives, the lady shrieks, and well near the fallen travel with her fear. What now ensues in this fell storm shall for itself, itself perform. Now God of this great vast, rebuke these surges that wash both heaven and hell. And now that hast upon the wind's command, bind them in brass, having called them from the deep. Or still, thy deafening dreadful thunders will gently quench thy nimble sulfurous flashes. Oh, how, Lacorda, how does my queen? Oh, thou stormest venomously, wilt thou spit on thyself? The seaman's whistle is as a whisper in the ears of death unheard. Oh, my Corrida! Lucina! Oh, divinest patroness and midwife gentle to those who cry by night, convey thy deity aboard our dancing boat, make swift the pangs of my queen's travails. Now, like Orida. Here is a thing too young for such a place, who, if it had conceit, would die, as I am like to do. Take in your arms this piece of your dead queen. Oh, how? How, like Orida? Patience, good sir, do not assist the storm. Here's all that's left living of your queen, a little daughter. Oh, you gods, why do you make us love your goodly gifts and snatch them straight away? Patience, good sir, even for this charge. How mild may be thy life, for a more blusterous birth than never, babe. Quiet and gentle thy conditions, for thou art the rudeliest welcome to this world that ever was prince's child. Happy. What follows? For thou hast this chiding and nativity as fire, air, water, earth, and heaven can make to herald thee from the womb. Even at the first, thy loss is more than can thy portage quit with all thou canst find here. Now the good gods lend their best eyes upon it. What courage, sir! God save you! Courage enough, I do not fear the flaw it hath done me to the worst. But for this poor infant, this fresh new sea there! Thou wilt not, wilt thou, blow and split thyself! But see, Rome and the bride and cloudy bill kiss the moon! I care not! Sir, your queen must overboard. The sea works high, the wind is loud, and will not lie still, still till the ship be cleared of the dead! That's your superstition! Pardon us, sir. With us at sea it hath still been observed, and we are strong in custom. Therefore, briefly yield her, for she must overboard straight, as you think me, so most wretched queen. Sir, we must just call to bid him ready. Thank you, gentle mariner. Here she lies, sir. Oh, like Horda, uh, fetch me spices, ink, and paper, my casket, and my jewels. I thee, whilst I say a priestly farewell to her. Suddenly, woman, a terrible child that hast thou had, my dear. No light, no fire. The unfriendly elements forgot thee utterly. Nor have I time to send thee hallowed to thy grave, but first was cast thee scarcely coffin in the ooze, where for a monument upon thy bones and air manning lamps, the belching whales and humming water must overwhelm thy corpse. Mine were simple shells. Mariner, say what coast is this? We're in Tarsus! Oh, thither! Good mariner, uh, alter thy course to Tyre. When canst thou reach it? Uh, by break of day, if the wind cease. Oh. Make for Tarsus. There will I visit Cleon, for the babe can hold out to Tyre. I'll leave her there, a careful nurse, and go thy ways, good mariner.
Lodging standing bleak upon the sea shook as the earth did quake. Oh. Pure surprise and fear made me quit the house. This is the cause we trouble you so early, but I much marvel at your lordship having such rich tire about you. Oh, should at these early hours give off the golden slumber of repose? No. <laughs> I hold it ever. Virtue and cunning were endowments greater than nobleness. <laughs> Tis known I ever have studied physic, through which secret art, by or turning authorities, I I have made known to me and to my aid the blessed infusions that dwell in vegetatives, metals, and stones. And I can speak of the disturbances that nature works and of her cures. <laughs> Your honor has through Ephesus poured forth, and hundreds by you have been restored, and your knowledge hath built Lord Saramon such strong renown as time shall ne'er decay. <laughs> what is that? Oh, sir. Even now did the sea toss upon our shore this chest. Tis of some wreck. Let's look upon it. <laughs> Tis like a coffin, sir. Whene'er it be, wrench it open straight. If the sea's stomach be charged with gold, tis a good constraint of fortune it belches upon us. Tis so, my lord. <laughs> How closely tis caulked and battooned. Did the sea cast it up? I never saw a billow so huge, sir, as tossed it upon the shore. Wrench it open. <laughs> Soft. <laughs> it smells most sweetly in my sense. A delicate odor. Has ever hit my nostrils. So up with it. <laughs> no! You most potent gods, what's here? Of course. Most oh. strange. Shrouded in cloth of state bombed and in treasured. Oh, with full bags of spices, a passport too. Oh, Apollo perfect me in the characters. <laughs> Here I give to understand that ere this coffin drive a land, I, King Pericles, <gasps> have lost this queen, worth more, uh, worth all our mundane cost, who finds her give her burying. She was the daughter of a king. Oh, besides this treasure for a fee, the gods requite his charity. Oh, if thou livest, Pericles, thou hast a heart that even cracks for woe. This chance tonight. Most likely, sir. Nay, certainly tonight. For look, look how fresh she looks. Oh, they were too rough that threw her in the sea. Death may usurp on nature many hours, and yet the fire of life kindle again the oppressed spirit. <laughs> I once heard of an Egyptian who nine hours lain dead, who was by good appliance recovered. <laughs> the rough and woeful music we have cause it to sound. The music there. Yes, but pray you give her air. <laughs> this queen will live. <laughs> Nature awakes. A warmth begins to blow out of her. This she hath not been entranced above five hours. See how she gets to blow into life's flower again. The heavens through you increase our wonder and set up your fame forever. She's alive! Oh, behold her eyelids, cases to those heavenly jewels which Pericles hath lost, begin to part their fringes. The diamonds of a most praised water do appear to make the world twice rich. Live and make us weep to hear your fate, fair creature, rare as you seem to be. Oh, dear Diana, where am I? Where is my lord? What world is this? Is this not strange? Most rare. Hush, my gentle neighbors. Come, come, lend me your hands. And Escalapius guide us. Madam, this letter.
letter, and some certain jewels lay with you in your coffer, which are at your command. <laughs> <laughs> know you the character. It is my lord's. <sighs> that I was shipped at sea, I well remember, even on my evening time. But whether they're delivered by the holy gods, I cannot rightly say. Since King Pericles, my wedded lord, who I ne'er shall see again, the vestal levery will I take me to never have more joy. Madam, if this you purpose as you speak, Diana's temple is not distant far, where you may abide until your date expire. <laughs> my recompense is thanks, that's all. Yet my goodwill is great, though the gift's small. Most honored Cleon, I must needs be gone. Tire stands in litigious peace. You and your lady take from my heart all thankfulness. The gods make up the rest upon you. Your shafts of fortune, though they hurt you mortally, yet glance full wanderingly on us. Oh, your sweet queen. The strict fates had pleased you had brought her hither to have blessed mine eyes with her. We cannot but obey the powers above us. Could I rage and roar as does the sea she lies in, yet the end must be as tis. And my gentle babe Marina, who for she was born at sea, I have named her so, I hereby charge your charity with all, leaving her the infant of your care and beseeching you to give her princely training so that she may be mannered as she is born. Fear not, my lord, but think your grace that fed my country with your corn, for which the people's prayers are still upon you, must in your child be thought on. If neglection should therein make me vile, the common body by you relieved would force me to my duty. But if to that my nature need a spur, the gods revenge it on me and mine to the end of generation. I believe you. Your honor and your goodness teach me to it without your vow, and so I take my leave. Good madam, make me blessed in your care in bringing up my child. I have one myself, which shall not be more dear to my respect than yours, my lord. Madam, my thanks and prayers. We'll bring your grace e'en to the edge of the shore, then give you up to the masked Neptune and the gentlest winds of heaven. I embrace your offer. Come, lady. Oh, oh, no tears, like Lycorda, no tears. Look to your little mistress, upon whose grace you may depend hereafter. Come, my lord. Imagine Pericles arrived at Tyre, welcome and settled to his own desire. His woeful queen we leave in Ephesus, unto Diana there of Oteris. Now to Marina bend your mind, whom our fast-growing scene must find in Tarsus and by Cleon trained in music. <laughs> Letters, who hath gained of education all the grace that makes her both the heart and place of general wonder. But alack, that monster envy off the rack of earned praise Marina's life seeks to take off with, with treason's knife. And in this kind hath our Cleon one daughter and a wench full grown, even right from marriage right. This made height Philitin, and it is said for certain in our story she would ever with Marina be. This Philitin <laughs> contends in skill with absolute Marina, who gets all praises which are paid as debts. To Dionysa, this so darks in Philitin all graceful marks, that Cleon's wife, with envy rare, a present murderer does prepare for good Marina, that her daughter might stand peerless by this slaughter. The sooner her vile thoughts to stead, like Corida, our nurse, is dead. <gasps> <laughs> And cursed Dionysa hath the pregnant instrument of wrath pressed for the blow. The unborn event I do commend to your content. Dionysa does appear with Leonine, a murderer. 
Thy oath, remember. Thou hast sworn to do it. Tis but a blow which never shall be known. Thou canst not do a thing in the world so soon to yield thee so much profit. Let not pity melt thee, but be a soldier to thy purpose. I will do it. But yet she is a goodly creature. Oh, the fitter then the gods should have her. Here she is. Here she is weeping for her nurse's death. Thou art resolved? I am resolved. No, I will rob Talus of her weed to strew thy green with the flowers, the yellows, blues, the purple violets, and marigolds shall as a carpet hang upon thy grave while summer days do last. I, me, poor maid, born in a tempest when my mother died. This world to me is like a lasting storm, worrying me from my friends. How now, Marina? Why do you keep alone? How chance my daughter is not with you? Uh, do not consume your blood with sorrowing. Have you a nurse of me? Oh, Lord, how your favors changed with this unprofitable woe. Come, give me your flowers. Oh, oh. <clears throat> or the sea margin, walk with Leonine. The air is quick there, and it pierces and sharpens the stomach. Come, Leonine, take her by the arm, walk with her. No, I pray you, I'll not bereave you of your servant. Oh, come, come. I love the king, your father, and yourself, with more than foreign heart. We every day expect him here. When he shall come and find our paragon to all reports thus blasted, he will repent the breadth of his great voyage. Blame both my lord and me that we have taken no care to your best courses. Go, I pray you, walk and be cheerful once again. Well, I will go. But yet I have no desire to it. Come, come. I know tis good for you. Walk half an hour, Leonine, the least. Remember what I have said? I warrant you, madam. I'll leave you, my sweet lady, for a while. Pray you, walk softly. Do not heat your blood. What? I must have a care of you. My thanks, sweet madam. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Is this wind westerly that blows? <laughs> Southwest. When I was born, the wind was north. Was so. My father, as nurse said, did never fear, but cried good seamen to the sailors, galling his kingly hands, hailing ropes and clasping to the mast, endured a sea that almost burst the deck. When was this? When I was born. Never was wind nor waves more violent, and from the ladder tackle washes off a canvas climber. Ha, says one, wilt out, and with the dropping industry they skip from stem to stern. The boatswain whistles and the master calls and trebles their confusion. Come, say your prayers. What mean you? If you require a little space for prayer, I grant it. Pray, but be not tedious, for the gods are quick of ear, and I am sworn to do my work with haste. Why will you kill me? To satisfy my lady. <laughs> now, now, why would she have me killed? As I can remember by my troth, I never did hurt her in all my life. I never spake bad word, nor did ill turn to any living creature. Believe me, I never killed a mouse, nor hurt a fly. I, I, I trod upon a worm once against my will, but I wept for it. <laughs> How have I offended? Where in my death might yield her any profit, or my life imply her any danger? My commission ah! is not to reason of the deed, but do it! You, you will not do it for all the world, I hope! Ah! You are well favored, and your looks for show you have a gentle heart. <laughs> I saw you lately when you caught hurt parting to that fought. Good sooth, it showed well in you. Do so now, your lady seeks my life. Come you between and save poor me, the weaker. I am sworn and will dispatch. Pirates, <laughs> 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 Come, let her. 
have her on board suddenly! <laughs> These roguing thieves served the great pirate Valdez and have seized Marina. Let her go. There's no chance she will return. I'll swear she's dead and thrown into the sea. market narrowly. Mitchellin is full of gallants. <laughs> we lost too much money this March by being too wenchless. We were never so much out of creatures. We have but poor three, and they can do no more than they can do. And they, with continual action, are as good as rotten. <laughs> then let us have fresh ones, whatever we shall pay for them. Mm. If there be not a conscience to be used in any trade, we shall never <laughs> prosper. <laughs> Thou sayest true, tis not our upbringing of poor bastards. For I believe I brought up some eleven. Aye, two eleven, and then brought them down again. Uh -huh. <laughs> but shall I go search the market? What else, man? The stuff we have, a strong wind will blow it to pieces. They're so pitifully sodden. <sighs> but I'll go search the market. Hmm. <laughs> Three or four thousand check wins were as pretty proportion for us to live quietly and so give over. Oh, why to give over, pray you? Is it a shame to get when we are old? Oh, well, credit comes not in the commodity, nor the commodity wages, not with the danger. I don't get that. Therefore, if in all use we should happen upon some pretty estate, it not amiss for us to keep our door hatched. Oh. Besides, the sore terms we stand upon with the gods will be strong with us for giving over. Oh, come, come. Others offend as well as we, this one here. Uh, aye, as well as we, and better too, we offend uh, worse. We. Besides, neither is our profession any trade. It's no calling. <sighs> Ugh. But here comes Bolts. Come your ways, masters. But you'll say she's a virgin. Oh, sir, we doubt it not. <laughs> Master, I have gone through for this piece, you see. If you like her, so. <laughs> if not, I have lost my earnest. <gasps> Bolt, <clears throat> has she any qualities? Oh, she has a good face, speaks well. Oh, and has excellent good clothes. There's no further necessity of qualities could make her be refused. What's her price, Bolt? I cannot be baited one doit of a thousand pieces. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> uh, well, come your ways, masters. You shall have your money presently. Uh, wait, uh, take her in and instruct her in what she must do so she may not be raw in entertainment. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Bolt, take you the marks of her. The color of her hair, complexion, height, age. Oh, with warrant of her virginity and cry, he that will pay most shall have her first. Oh, such a maidenhead were no cheap thing, if men are as they have been. <laughs> Get this done as I command you. Performance shall... Hold this. You Performance shall follow... <laughs> Alack, that Leonine was so slack, so slow. He should have struck, not spoke. Or that these pirates, not enough barbarous, had not Orbord thrown me for to seek my mother. <laughs> Why lament you, pretty one? That I am pretty. <laughs> the gods have done their part in you. I accuse them not. <laughs> you are light into my hands, where you are like to live. The more my fault to escape his hands, where I was like to die. <laughs> Aye, and you shall live in pleasure. No! Yes, indeed shall you. You shall fare well. You shall have the difference of complexion. Are you a woman? <laughs> what would you have me be and I be not a woman? An honest woman or not a woman? Mary, whip thee, gosling. <laughs> Come. I think I shall have something to do with you. <laughs> you are a young, foolish sapling and must be bowed as I would have you. The gods defend me! <laughs> if the gods defend
defend you by men, then men must comfort you. Hmm? Men must feed you. Men must stir you up. Oh, bolts returned. <laughs> Sir, hast thou cried her through the market? I have cried her almost to the number of her hairs. I have painted her picture with my voice. Oh, <laughs> and how dost thou find the inclination of the people, especially the younger sort? They have listened to me as they would have hearkened to their father's testament. <laughs> oh, I pray you, come hither a while. You have fortunes coming upon you. Mark me, you must seem to do that fearfully which you commit willingly. <laughs> Despise profit where you have most to gain. To weep, you live as you do, makes pity in your lovers. <laughs> Seldom, but that pity begets you a good opinion, and that opinion a mere profit. I understand you not. Oh, take her home, mistress, take her home. These blushes of hers must be quenched with some <laughs> present practice. Thou sayest true in face, so they must. For your bride goes to that with shame which is her way to go with warrant. <laughs> Come, young one. I like the manner of your garments well. well. <laughs> Come your ways, follow me. If fires be hot, knife sharp, or water steep, untied I still my virgin knot will keep. Diana, aid my purpose. <laughs> Dionysa, such a piece of slaughter the sun and moon ne'er looked upon. I think you'll turn a child again. Were I chief lord of all this spacious world, I'll give it to undo the deed. Oh, lady, much less in blood than virtue, and yet a princess to equal any crown of the earth in the justice of compare. No oh, villain, Leonine, whom thou hast poisoned too. If thou hadst drunk to him, tis been a kindness becoming well thy fact. What canst thou say when noble Pericles shall demand his child? That she is dead. Nurses are not the fates to foster it, nor ever to preserve. She died at night, I'll say so. Who can cross it? Unless you play the pious innocent and for an honest attribute crowd, she died by foul play! Oh, go to. <laughs> well, well, of all the faults beneath the heavens, the gods do like this the worst. I do shame to think of what a noble strain you are, and of how coward a spirit! To such proceeding, whoever in his approbation added, though not his prime consent, he did not flow from honorable sources! Be it so, then! Yet none does know but you how she came dead. Nor none can know, Leonine being gone. She did disdain my child, and stood between her and her fortunes. None would look on her, but cast their gazes on Marina's face, whilst ours was blurted at and held a malkin not worth the time of day. It pierced me through. And though you call my course unnatural, you not your child well loving, I find it greets me as an enterprise of kindness, performed to your sole daughter. Heavens, forgive it. And as for Pericles, what should he say? We wept after her hearse, and yet we mourn. Her monument is almost finished, and her epitaphs in glittering golden characters express a general praise to her, and care in us, at whose expense tis done. Thou would like the harpy, which to betray us with thine angel's face, seize with thine eagle's talons. And you are like the one that superstitiously doth swear to the gods that winter kills the flies. But yet I know you'll do as I advise. Pericles is once again thwarting the wayward seas attended on by many a lord and knight, to see his daughter, all his heart's delight. Well sailing ships and bounteous winds have brought this king to Tarsus. Think his pilot thought, so with his steerage your thoughts may grow on to fetch his daughter home, who first is gone. See how belief may suffer by foul show. This borrowed passion stands for true Old woe. 
Now please your wit. This epitaph is for Marina writ by cursed Dionysa. <laughs> the fairest, sweetest, and best lies here, who withered in her spring of year. She was of Tyrus, the king's daughter, on whom foul death hath made this slaughter. Marina was she called, and at her birth, Thetis, being proud, swallowed some part of the earth. Therefore the earth, fearing to be o'erflowed, hath Thetis' birth child on the heavens bestowed. Wherefore she does, and swears she'll never stint, make raging battery upon shores of flint. No visor does become black villainy so well as soft and tender flattery. And Pericles, in sorrow all devoured, with sighs shot through and biggest tears o'ershowered, leaves Tarsus and again embarks. He swears never to wash his face or cut his hairs. He puts on sackcloth and to sea. He bears a tempest which his mortal vessel tears, and yet he rides it out. Let Pericles believe his daughter's dead and set his courses to be ordered by Lady Fortune. While our scene must play his daughter's woe and heavy well a day in her unholy service. Patience then. And think you now are all in Mytilene. Did you ever hear the like? No, nor never shall do in such a place as this, she being once gone. But to have divinity preach there. Did you ever dream of such a thing? No. <laughs> no. Come, I am for no more body houses. Shall go hear the vestals sing? I'll do anything that is virtuous now. But I'm out of the road of rutting forever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I had rather more than twice her worth. She had ne'er come here. <laughs> Fie. Fie upon her! She's able to freeze the god Priapus and undo a whole generation. Oh, we must either get her ravished or be rid of her. When she should do for clients her fitment and do me the kindness of our profession. She has me her quirks, her reasons, her master reasons, her prayers, her knees. <sighs> that she would make a Puritan of the devil if he should cheapen a kiss of her. Faith, I must ravish her. Or she'll disfurnish us of all our cavaliers and make our swearers priests. Now a pox upon her green sickness for me. Faith, there's no way to be rid on it but by way of the pox. <gasps> Here comes Lord Lysimachus, disguised. Oh, we should have both Lord and Loon if our peevish baggage would but give way to customers. How now? How a dozen of virginities. Oh, 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 the oh. God to bless your honor. <laughs> we are glad to see your honor in such good health. <laughs> How now? Wholesome iniquity have you that a man may deal with all and defy the surgeon? Oh. <laughs> we have here one, sir, mm. if she would, but there never came her like in Mytilene. Oh, mm. if she'll do the deed of darkness, thou would say? <laughs> oh, thou knows what tis to say well enough. <laughs> uh, well, call forth, call oh. forth. Mm. Flesh and blood, sir, white and red, you shall see a rose. And she were a rose indeed, if she would but... Uh... What? Prithee? Oh, sir, I can be modest. <laughs> 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 that dignifies the renown of a bard. No less than it gives a good report to a number to be chased. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here comes that which grows to the stock. Never plucked yet, I can assure you. Is she not a is she, is she not a fair creature? Faith? <laughs> she would serve after a long voyage at sea. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, there's for you. Leave us. I beseech your grace a word, and I'll have done presently. I beseech you, do. <laughs> First, 
this is an honorable gentleman. I desire to find him so that I may worthily note him. <laughs> Next, he is the governor of this country, and a man I am bound to. He governs this place, you are bound to him indeed. But how honorable he is in that, I know not. Turn you without any more of this virginal fencing. Will you use him kindly? He will line your apron with gold. He will do graciously, I will thankfully receive. Are you done? <laughs> uh, your grace, she's not um paste yet. You must oh. take some pains to work her to your manage. <laughs> Come, we'll leave his honor and her together. <laughs> Go thy ways. <laughs> 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 Now then, pretty one, uh, how long have you been at this trade? What trade, sir? Well, <laughs> why, I cannot name it, but I shall offend. <laughs> I cannot be offended with my trade. Please you to name it. Um, uh, how long have you been of this profession? Ere since I can remember. Did you go to it so young? <laughs> Were you a gamester at five or seven? Earlier too, so if now I be one. Why, the house you dwell in proclaims you to be a creature of sale. Do you know this place to be a house of such resort and will come into it? <laughs> I hear say you are of honorable parts and are the governor of this place. Why, hath your principal made known unto you who I am? Who is my principal? Why, your herb woman, she that sets seeds and roots of shame and iniquity. Oh, you have heard something of my power, and so stand aloof for more serious wooing. But I protest to thee, pretty one, my authority shall not see thee, or else look friendly upon thee. Come, bring me to some private place. Come, come. If you were born to honor, show it now. If put upon you, make the judgment good that thought you worthy of it. How is this? How's this? Some more. Be sage. For me that am a maid, my lord, though most ungentle fortune have placed me in this sty, where since I came diseases have been sold dearer than physic. Oh, that the gods would set me free from this unhallowed place, though they did change me to the meanest bird that flies in the purer air. I did not think thou couldst have spoke so well, and there dream thou couldst. Had I brought hither a corrupted mind, thy speech has altered it. Hold. Here's gold for thee. Persever in that clear way thou goest, and the gods strengthen thee. The good gods preserve you! For my part, be you thought that I came with no ill intent. For to me the very doors and windows savor vilely. <laughs> Fare thee well. Thou art a piece of virtue, and I doubt not that thy training hath been noble. Hold. Here's more gold for thee. A curse upon him. Die he like a thief that robs thee of thy goodness. If thou dost hear from me, it shall be for thy good. I prithee, sir, a one piece for me. A thought, thou damned doorkeeper! Oh. Your house, but for this virgin that doth prop it, would sink and overwhelm you. Away! <sighs> <sighs> How's this? We must take another course with you. If your peevish chastity, which is not worth a breakfast in the cheapest country under the cup, shall undo a whole household, let me be gilded like a spaniel. Come what? our ways! Whither wilt thou have me? We must have your maidenhood taken off, or the common hangman shall execute it. That's... Come your ways! We'll have no more gentlemen <laughs> driven off. Come your ways, I say! Uh, how now? What's the matter? Oh, worse and worse, mistress. She has here spoken holy words to the Lord Lysimachus. Oh, abominable! She makes our profession, as it were, to sink before the face of the gods. Mary, hang her up forever. The nobleman would have treated her like a nobleman, but she sent him away as cold as a snowball, saying his prayers too low! <laughs> Bolt! Take her away. Use her at thy pleasure, crack the glass of her virginity, and make the rest malleable. Hark, hark, you gods! Ah. She conjures! 
Oh, take her away! Would she had never come within my doors? Mary, hang you! She's born to undo us. Will you not go the way of womankind? <laughs> come, mistress. Come your ways with me. No! no. <laughs> Whither wilt thou have me? To take from you the jewel you hold so dear. Prithee, tell me one thing first. Come then, your one thing. What canst thou wish thine enemy to be? Why, I could wish him to be my master, or rather my mistress. Neither of these things are so bad as thou art, since they do better thee and their command. Thou holdst a place for which the paced fiend of hell would not in reputation change. Thou art the damned doorkeeper to every coistrel that comes inquiring for his tib. To the choleric fisting of every rogue, thy ear is liable. Thy food is such as hath been belched on by infected lungs. What would you have me do? Go to the wars, would you? Where a man may serve seven years for the loss of a leg and not have money enough in the end to buy him a wooden one. Do anything but this thou doest. Empty old receptacles or common shores of filth served by indenture to the common hangman. Any of these ways are yet better than this. For what thou professest, a baboon, could he speak, would own a name too dear. <sighs> oh, that the gods would safely deliver me from this place. Here! <laughs> Tears gold for thee, if that thy master can gain by thee. Pro proclaim that I can sing, weave, sew, and dance with other virtues which I'll keep from boast. And I will undertake all these to teach, I, I doubt not, but this populous city will yield many scholars. But can you teach all this you speak of? Prove that I cannot, take me home again, and prostitute me to the basest groom that doth frequent your house. I'll see what I can do for thee. If I can place thee, I will. But amongst honest women? <laughs> Faith, my acquaintance lies little amongst them. But, since your master and mistress have bought you, there's no going but by their consent. Therefore, I will acquaint them with your purpose, and I doubt not, but I shall find them tractable enough. I'll do for thee what I can. <laughs> Marina, thus the brothel escapes! <laughs> <laughs> and chances into an honest house, our story says. She sings like one immortal. Ah. And she dances, goddess-like to her admired lays, that pupils lack she none of noble race, that pour their bounty on her. And her game, she gives the cursed bod. Here we her place. Now, to her father turn your thoughts again. Where we left him, on the sea, we there him lost. Whence driven before the winds, he is arrived here, where his daughter dwells. And suppose him off this coast, now at anchor. Lysimachus, our Tyrian ship espies, and to him on his barge in fervor hies. Lord Helicanus, there's a barge from Mytilin, and in it is Lysimachus the governor, who craves to come aboard. What is your will? That he have his. Sir, this is the man that cannot you would resolve you. Hail, reverend sir. The gods preserve you. And you, sir, to outlive the age I am and die as I would do. You wish me well. <laughs> Being on shore, honoring of Neptune's triumphs, seeing this goodly vessel ride before us, I made to it, to know of whence you are. First, sir, what is your place? I am the governor of this place you lie before. Our vessel is of Tyre, mm. in it the king. A man who for this three months hath not spoken to any one, nor taken sustenance, but to prorogue his grief. Upon what grounds is his distemperature? It would be too tedious to repeat, but the main grief springs from the loss of a beloved daughter and a wife. Oh. May we not see him? You may, but bootless is your sigh. He will not speak to any. Yet let me obtain my wish. Behold him. Oh, Sir King! All hail. <laughs> the gods preserve you. Hail, royal sir! It is in vain. He will not speak to you. My lord, uh, we have a maid in Mytilene I durst wager could win the words of him. Tis well be fought. 
She, questionless with her sweet harmonies and other chosen attractions, would allure and make a battery against his different parts, which now are midway stops. Sure, all's effectless, yet nothing we'll omit that bears recovery's name. But since your kindness we have stretched thus far, let us beseech you that for our gold we may provisions have, wherein <laughs> we are not weary for want, but weary for the staleness. <laughs> oh, sir... The courtesy that if we should deny the most just gods for every graph would send a caterpillar and so afflict our province. <laughs> Yet once more let me entreat to know the cause at large of your king's sorrow. Sit, sir, I will recount it to you. Oh, but see, I am prevented. Oh, here is the lady that I sent for. Welcome, fair one. Is not a goodly presence. She is a gallant lady. <laughs> She's such a one that... Where I well assured came of a gentle kind and noble stock, I'd wish no better choice to think me rarely wed. Fair one, all goodness that consists in bounty expect even here, where is a kingly patient. If that thy prosperous and artificial feet can draw him but to answer thee in aught, thy sacred physic shall receive such pay as thy desires can wish. Sir, I will use my utmost skill in his recovery. Provided that none but I be suffered to come near him? Come, let us leave her, and the gods make her prosperous. that ne'er before invited eyes but have been gazed on like a comet. She speaks, my lord, that maybe hath endured a grief might equal yours if both were justly weighed. Though wayward fortune did malign my state, my derivation was from ancestors who stood equivalent with mighty kings. But time hath rooted out my parentage and to the world and awkward casualties bound me in servitude. I will desist. But there is something that glows upon my cheek and whispers in mine ear. Go not till he speak. My fortune's parentage, good parentage to equal mine, was it not thus? What say you? I said, my lord, if you did know my parentage, you would not do me violence. I do believe you. Pray you, turn your eyes upon me. You are something like that. Uh, uh, what countrywoman here of these shores? No, nor of any shores, yet I was mortally brought forth, and am no other than I appear. I am great with woe, and shall deliver weeping. My dearest wife was like this maid, and such a one my daughter might have been. Where do you live? Where I am but a stranger. From the deck you may discern the place. Where were you bred, and how achieved you these endowments which you make more rich to owe? <laughs> if I should tell my history, it would seem more like lies disdained in the reporting. Prithee speak. Falseness cannot come from thee, for thou look'st as modest as justice. So it seems like a palace for the crown truth to dwell in. I shall believe you and make my senses credit thy relation to points that seem impossible for thou looks like one I loved indeed. 
What were thy friends? Didst thou not say thou camest from good descending? So indeed I did. Report thy parentage. I, I think thou said thou hadst been tossed from wrong to injury, and that thou thoughts thy griefs might equal mine if both were open. Some such thing I said, and said no more than what my thoughts did warrant me was likely. Tell thy story. For thou looks like patience, gazing on king's graves and smiling extremity out of act. What were thy friends? How lost thou them? Thy name, my most kind virgin? Recount, I do beseech thee. Come, sit by me. My name is Marina. <laughs> oh, I am not. And thou by some incense God sent hither to make the world to laugh at me. Patience, good sir, or here I'll cease. Nay, I'll be patient, though little knowest how to startle me to call thyself Marina. The name was given to me by one that had some power, my father and a king. How? A king's daughter and called Marina. You said you would believe me. But not to be a troubler of your peace, I will end here. But are you flesh and blood? Have you a working pulse and are no fairy? Motion as well? Speak on. Where were you born and wherefore called Marina? Called Marina, for I was born at sea. At sea? What mother? My mother was the daughter of a king who died the minute I was born, as my good nurse, like Horida, hath oft delivered weeping. Stop there a little. This is the rarest dream that e'er dull sleep did mock sad fools withal. Now this cannot be, my daughter's buried. Well, where were you bred? I'll hear you more to the bottom of your story and never interrupt you. You scorn, for best I did give o'er. I will believe you by the syllable of what you shall deliver, yet give me leave. How came you in these parts? Where were you bred? The king, my father, did in Tarsus leave me. Till cruel Cleon with his wicked wife did seek to murder me, and wooed a villain to attempt it, who, having drawn to do it, a crew of pirates came and rescued me, brought me to Middleton. But whither would you have me? Why do you weep? It may be you think me an impostor. No, good faith, I am the daughter to King Pericles, if good King Pericles be. Ho, oh, Helicanus! Oh, my lord? Thou art a grave and noble counselor, most wise in general. Tell me, if thou canst, what this maid is, or what is like to be that thus hath made me weep. I know not, but here is the regent, sir, of Midland speaks nobly of her. She would never tell her parentage. Being demanded that, she would sit still and weep. Oh, Helicanus, strike me, honored sir. Give me a gash, put me to present pain, lest this great joy of rushing upon me or bear the shores of my mortality and drown me in their sweetness. Oh, come hither. Thou that begets to him that to thee begets, thou that was born at sea, buried at Tarsus, and found at sea again. Down on thy knees, Helicanus, thank the gods, as loud as thunder threatens us. This is Marina. What was thy mother's name? Tell me but that, for truth can never be confirmed enough, though doubts it ever sleep. First, sir, I pray, what is your title? I am Pericles of Tyre. Yet yeah, tell me now my drowned queen's name, for in the rest thou hast been godlike perfect, the heir of kingdoms, and another like to Pericles thy father. Is it no more to be your daughter than to say my mother's name was Thesa? Thesa was my mother who did end the minute I began. Blessings on me, rise, thou art my child. Oh, oh Helicanus, she is not dead at Tarsus as she should have been my savage Cleon. She shall tell thee all when thou shalt kneel, and justify and acknowledge that she is thy very princess. But who is this? Uh, Tis the governor of Midland, sir, who, hearing of your melancholy state, did come to see you. I embrace you. Oh, oh heavens bless my girl, but hark, what music. Uh, uh, tell, Helicanus, tell him, or point by point, for yet he seems to doubt how sure you are my daughter. But, but what music? My lord, I hear none. None? <laughs> the music of the spheres, loosed by Marina. It is not good to cross him. Give him way. Oh. <laughs> Rarest sounds, do ye not hear? My lord, I hear. Oh. 
most heavenly music. Oh, 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 oh it nips the end of listening. And, oh, oh, thick slumber hangs upon mine eyes. Oh, it's let me rest. Oh, a pillow for his oh. head, and so leave him. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, my companion friends, if this but answer to my just belief, I'll well remember you. <laughs> My temple stands in Ephesus, hie thee thither, and do upon mine altar sacrifice. There, when my maiden priests are met together, reveal how thou at sea didst lose thy wife, and give them repetition to the life. Perform my bidding, or thou livest in woe. Do it, and happy, by my silver bow. Awake, and tell thy dream. Celestial Diane, goddess Argentine, I shall obey thee. Oh, Helicanus! Our purpose was for Tarsus, there to strike the inhospitable Cleon, but I am for other services first. Toward Ephesus, turn our blown sails, eftsoons I'll tell thee why. Shall we refresh us, sir, upon your shore, and give you gold for such provisions as our intents shall need? My lord, with all my heart, and when you come ashore, I have another suit. You shall prevail, were it to woo my daughter. <laughs> oh, for it seems you have been noble towards her. <laughs> Come, my Marina. Oh. Now our sands are almost run. More a little, and then dumb. This my last boon give me, for such kindness must relieve me, that you aptly will suppose what pageantry, what shows, what minstrelsy and pretty din the regent made round Mytilene to greet the king. So he thrived, that he is promised to be wife to fair Marina, but in no wise till he had done his sacrifice as Diane bade. Whereto being bound, <laughs> the interim pray you all confound. In feathered briefness, sails are filled, and wishes fall out as they are willed. In Ephesus, the temple see, the king, and all our company. Hail, Diane. To perform thy just command, I here confess myself the king of Tyre who frighted from my country, did at Pentapolis wed the fair Thesa. At sea in childbed died she, but brought forth a maid child called Marina, who, O oh goddess, wears yet thy silver livery. She at Tarsus was nursed with Cleon, who at fourteen years sought to murder her, but her better stars brought her to Mytilene. Against two shore riding, her fortunes brought the maid aboard us, for by her own most clear remembrance she made known herself my daughter. Voice and favor, you are, you are all royal Pericles. Huh? Oh, oh, what means the nun? She, she dies, gentlemen, help. She, you noble sir, if you told Diana's altar true, this is your wife. <laughs> Reverend appear, no, I threw her overboard with these very arms. Upon this very shore, I warrant you. Tis most certain. <laughs> Look to the lady, she's but... Or joined. <laughs> Early and blustering morn, this lady was thrown upon this shore. I oped the coffin, found their rich jewels, recovered her, and brought her here to Diana's temple. Look, Thazo's recovered. Oh, oh, let me look. If it be none of mine, my sanctity will to my sense by no licentious ear, but curb in spite of seeing. Oh, my lord, are you not Pericles? Like him you spake, like him you are. Did you not name a tempest, a birth, and death? The voice of dead Thaisa? The Thaisa am I, supposed dead and drowned. Oh, immortal Diane! <laughs> now I know you better. When we with tears parted Pentapolis, the king my father gave you such a ring. This, this or no more, you gods, your present kindness makes my past misery sports. You shall do well that on the touching of her lips I shall melt and no more be seen. Oh, come, be buried a second time within these arms. 
My heart leaps to be gone into my mother's bosom. Oh, look who kneels here. Flesh of thy flesh stays of thy burden at sea, and called Marina, for she was yielded there. Blessed and mine own. <laughs> Hail, madam, and my queen. I know you not. You heard me say, when I did fly from Tyre, I left behind an ancient substitute. Do you remember what I called the man? I have named him oft. Twas Helicanus, oh. then. Stale confirmation. And now do I long to hear how you were found, how possibly preserved and you to thank besides the gods for this great miracle. Lord Saramon, my lord, this man through whom the gods have shown their power, that can from first to last resolve you. Reverend sir, the gods can have no mortal officer than you. Oh, can you deliver me how this dead queen relives? <laughs> I will, my lord. First, Go with you to my house, where shall be shown you all that was found with her. How she came here, placed her at Diana's temple. No needful thing omitted. Pure Diane, I bless thee for thy visions. I shall offer night oblations to thee. Othesa, this prince, the fair betrothed of your daughter, shall marry her at Pentapolis. Lord Sermon hath letters of good credit, sir. Her father is dead. Oh, heavens make a star of him. Yet there, my queen, we'll celebrate their nuptials, and we ourselves shall in that kingdom spend our following days. Our son and daughter shall entire reign. <laughs> oh, Lord Saramon, we do our longing stay to hear the rest untold. <laughs> Sir, leads the way. In Antiochus and his daughter, have you heard of monstrous lust, the due and just reward? <laughs> In Pericles, his queen and daughter seen, although assailed with fortune fierce and keen, virtue preserved from fell destruction's blast, led on by heaven and crowned with joy at last. In Halicanus, you may well descry a figure of faith, of truth, and loyalty. And in Reverend Saramon, there does well appear the worth that learned charity I wear. For wicked Cleon and his wife, when fame had spread their cursed deed and honored name of Pericles, to rage the city turned, that him and his they in his palace burned. Now, on your patience evermore attending, new joy wait on you. Here our play has ending. Thank you, everyone. Thank you all for coming and enjoying and sharing with us Green Stage's 34th season. Woo!